Yes, Lord, we celebrate your goodness tonight. Come on. Praise the Lord. God bless you, listeners. We continue today, the last day of the three days, Psalm 3 discussion. We are looking at Psalm 3 from verse 3 to 6. This is Psalm for the day, coming to you from the central parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Abuja. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for all you have been teaching us in the past three days. Today, as we conclude this teaching, please, Lord, build us up. Help us, Lord, that we would have developed our own holy faith, out of which we shall indeed be built up. The faith that will stand the test of time, the faith, the faith that will triumph over difficult situations. Let us grow them, even by the word today. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We are looking at Psalm 3, verse 3 to 6. Essentially, we want to look at how David reacted. A king that was driven away, he was running away from his son to save his life. He said, a son who had come against me in this manner, what else? Because it was his servant that ran to him to tell him, this your son has gathered so many people and they are following him. He has run to such a place and asked that they should announce that he's king. The next thing, you know, there cannot be two kings on the throne. If he must be king, the father must be eliminated. Someone that has already planned to be, to meet a man that was not prepared, with ease, he will just catch him and eliminate him. But the moment David had, let me run for dear life. Instead of facing a battle I'm not prepared for, he ran. But as he was running, he knew this was a man that carried the presence of the Almighty. This was a man that was enthroned by the, by the Lord. This was a man that walks with God. And per second, per second, even while he was going to all his battles, he will ask, God, shall I go? If I should go with how many soldiers, which tactics? The reason he won all his battles. He never went without asking God. He never went without trusting the Most High to go with him. And so, when he was faced with this, David, rather than cry and uh, Church years old, or start a battle that was just not what he went to God. The Bible in Romans chapter 10, verse 10, he says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. David believed in his heart unto righteousness, and by the confession of his mouth, he was saved. He confessed the excellency of the Lord. He confessed God as his savior. He confessed him as his, deliver, as his deliverer. And if you remember the children of Israel, when they were going to go and spy that land, oh, we were like grasshopper before them. Uh, the people were so mighty. They are giants. They are this. And the Lord told them, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do. So as David knew all these facts, even from his generation past, so he knew the power of confession. He knew the power of word. Like the Bible tells us there in Proverbs chapter 18, 21, the power of life and death, they are there in our tongue. He would rather not say anything negative. He would rather not say anything contrary. Rather, praising the Lord worshiping and magnifying him so that God in his might will come down. The Bible says the Lord inhabits the praises of his people as he worships God in spite of the problems around him. God will come to the scene, take over that problem, 
that worship alone will demystify that problem, will make it to be small. And of course, as the Lord comes inhabiting that place, God cannot come into your presence and will not take care of everything contrary. The Bible tells us in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. We also know the children of Israel were taken in captivity. And they were singing, how now shall we sing the song of the Lord in captivity? He said, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted unto thee, O Lord. What are you meditating in your heart? It is what your heart is composed of that your mouth will speak forth like that Matthew 12, 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. And like we looked on the first day, Proverbs 4, 23, guide your heart with all diligence. What things are you allowing to enter your heart? What things are you thinking of when you are sitting alone, when you are lying down? Are you meditating on the word of God, the word that can deliver the word that can give you victory, the word that can set you free in the face of challenges of life. No wonder Jesus Christ, when the enemy came and said he should turn uh, stones to bread, he looked at this one. He said, this one thinks it is by this ordinary bread, eating physical food, that I live. No! There is something greater that can give life. And he told him, quoting from Deuteronomy, he said, man, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Almighty God. We were created by the word of God. We will continue to live by the word of God because the word itself is even life, is light unto us. So, David spoke the word and the word saw him through. He brought the word to the sin and it manifested. He was delivered from all the problems that he was going through. At the end of the day, if you look at that story, Absalom himself got hanged. He was a very handsome and very hairy. As he was running on the horse, his hair caught the tree and he was hung there. Unfortunately, here was David's servant who felt he was doing his master good. Struck the son. Oh, David wept for Absalom. Why did he? That, that fellow that did it was also reprimanded for it. He lost. Yet David did not fight. God gave him victory in a battle he didn't fight. Praise the Lord. So I pray for somebody. Don't worry. Looking unto Christ, the author and finisher of your faith in difficult times. Cast all your cares upon him. For he cares. He says, come, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Put all your pains on him. Cast all your cares on him. All the troubles you may be going through, he's more than able. Just trust him. Take your eyes away from those problems. Rather, look unto God. Just one finish up your faith. He will lighten the body, and very soon it shall be over. You will see his purpose for taking you through. You will come out stronger. We will come out wiser, we will come out better, even to the glory of his name. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, thank you because we know you have spoken. We know the word shall indeed be life and light unto us. Every crooked part in our lives, let the word straighten. We have come with our cares, we have come with our body. Oh Lord God Almighty, take them over, take them over in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Yes, Lord, we celebrate your goodness tonight. Come on.